Hello everyone. I'm glad you came to see me at the easel. If you downloaded, if you're a member of Patreon and you were able to download the traceable, uh, this is what it kind of looks like transferred onto a um, a, ni uh, a 9 by 11. And as always, I am going to start with the background first and then start to fill in the face. Because for me, I'm doing this as part of like a rainbow series of villains like I did for the females. His background is going to be orange. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my cadmium orange hue onto my palette. And I'm going to use a three quarter inch brush, my standard brush. It's a good idea to take very good care of your brushes. I kind of try to wash mine most of the way off and use a gentle uh, motion to get stuff cleaned off of there. So that way my brushes stay in good order. Occasionally tops do come off of them. That does happen. But it's always a good idea to you know, reattach if you can and, and save the brush. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling it in. And the directionality doesn't really matter because we're gonna go in and add detail to it after the fact. We're just sort of kind of filling it in And let me go ahead and get my chat open on my screen. There we go. So that way I can see if I've got any messages. Don't forget to do your tops and your sides. It's always a good idea to try and do as much of this up at the front as you can. So that way you don't have to worry about trying to color swatch things in after the fact. There we go. That way I've got my top done and we'll go ahead and we'll fill in the sides. So that way I can move the, the paint around on the canvas a little more easily where the edges are. And when you drew your design into your to your canvas, I hope you extended his shoulder line over on both sides. So the orange won't go completely down. It'll go most of the way, but not all the way. There we go. And because this brush is too big for going around that way, for now I'm just doing these big areas and I'll go back in with a detail brush to get the sides a little more clearly. It won't matter a whole lot because I'll probably wind up going over a little bit and orange covers pretty well because the warmer colors are a little transparent. Especially true, you know, on the student level paints. And we're just kind of filling in the space. I know that Gaston is one of my favorite character meet and greets in the park because he is so hilarious. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the sides now. And this part's a little bit trickier to get at with the, the camera in the way. So we'll do this real quick.
There we go. And if I go over a little bit here, it's not a big deal because the color in that area that I'll be going over with is black and red. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off this brush because I'm done with it. And I'm gonna tap it off because I don't think I'm gonna wind up using this brush again. So I'm gonna dry it off and set it aside. Now I'm gonna use my angle brush. This is a half inch angle brush because it will give me a, a lot easier for my lines here to kind of go and follow along where, I, where I've already drawn in my design. Just makes it easy. There we go. There was this one time during one of the, um, the, vil the D3 Darlings Villain Takes the Kingdom events where I was dressed up as the Queen of Hearts because we know she's my favorite. And we did a photo op with Gaston and sort of like a video and it was quite hilarious. He was, he was such a good time and I got the greatest picture of him being like all charming like he is here. I say charming, but read sleazy. We'll go with sleazy. And as the queen of hearts, I was like pouting and I was looking over at him like, you think you're so hot? It was, it's one to date, one of my favorite pictures that I've done with a character just because there was so much emotion in it. Okay. There we go. And we're still just kind of filling in our background. Again, don't worry too much. I've kind of stuck with a, with a diagonal pattern, but that's not strictly necessary because we're going to do something with this background to kind of over the top it. Because, you know, I do like to do my, my dot style for my villains. I like them to be consistent. And I'm thinking I like the movement of my kind of strokes here. So I'm going to make sure that they're super visible. And they're all kind of going up in that direction. It occurs to me you could use this as a template for... Uh, painting an Elvis if you really like just because the hairstyle is so reminiscent. I'm sure it could work for a couple of other like vintage personalities. Here we go. Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. Occasionally life happens. I'm not sure if my chat is working because my box keeps saying disconnected from chat. So I'm sorry if you're typing and I'm not seeing it. It keeps popping up on my phone disconnected from chat and then it works and then it doesn't. I don't know. Verify if it's working. My husband is a tech genius. So he's taking a look at things for me. I did remember to bring a drink in with me today. I've got a Tazo vanilla chai. Are we good? Is it should be. Okay. There we go. And we're almost done with our with our beginner background. Almost finished putting it in.
and I think I talked about this a little last week, but you should never load your brush up to the metal. If you're doing that, it means that you are using too much paint for your brush and you should consider using a larger brush. And I'm almost done with this. And then I think I might put this brush away for the moment. There we go. I'm not sure why I left that, but let's fix it. Oh, no worries. I'm going to cover that area with black so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to rinse off my brush and dry it off because I'm going to need to use this to put on my black. Because I'm going to put his hair in next. I'm kind of going to work from the top down so I don't put my wrist in my painting while it's still wet. So that way I don't have to dry it as many times. So I'm going to use Mars Black. I like Mars Black because it kind of has that slight hint of brown, more like, like shoe leather black, where it's still sort of natural. It's not like that artificially mascara very black. You know what I'm talking about. And it does, in fact, look a little like shoe polish, which is great for Gaston since he kind of has that slick hairstyle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that my brush down into my paint, you know, loading it up carefully. I don't need to put a hole on it once. And I'm going to start putting in his hair. And I'm going to do the side over here just because it's the hardest to reach right now with my, with my brush and the camera in the way. And I'm going to have to go in with my detail brush because that's a little bit smaller. I think this brush might be too big for what I'm asking of it. So I'm going to switch to my other brush. I'm going to come back to this though because I'm going to need this one. I'm going to switch over to this one. And this is a one round to get this little small sliver. And to get up here around where his like little hair piece is. There we go. I'm going to rinse that brush off so I don't want that right now. And I'm going to switch back over to my half inch angle brush. And I'm going to kind of continue to fill it in and follow around. And it's kind of helpful to think about for this, the directionality of the way your hair comes off of your head a little bit, especially when your hair is long. Because your brush strokes will be slightly visible. We're still going to go over it with dots, but you'll still see some of that directionality of your paintbrush. So definitely be mindful of that when you're doing your brush strokes. And that and it will add a little bit of texture. And we like texture here. And I'm going to continue to follow up around his hair. We're going to be here a while. This is definitely going to be a long one again. I anticipate at least three hours, maybe four. It kind of depends on how life goes. Aw, thank you, hon. It's looking cute. Or are you saying that I sound cute? Because I'm pretty sure I do not sound cute. Okay. And filling in up around the top. I'm doing this all dry brush because I don't I don't want my lines to bleed at all. But we may go over it with a second coat for coverage, anywhere where you might see a little bit of white on your canvas. That may want the kind of lapse of paint. 
that create that texture, even though it's all right now the same color. We want that kind of, that stroke. Especially for something like hair. And you kind of want to be careful going around the ear with this. We'll go back in with our detail brush because black is a little hard to cover over. Just like in real life when you dye your hair going from black to something else is definitely hard. You have to bleach it probably a handful of times. I'm pretty proud of the progress that I have had this weekend. I finished two sewing projects yesterday that I had cut out from, I don't know, before I was at my current job. So they've been at least cut out for, I don't know, six months. So it felt really, really good to get those kind of off my docket and to be finished. I also did a really fun, um, I won't say it's an upcycle because it's still a dress, but I took a dress that I was gifted and it was way too big. And it definitely needed a lot of love to fit my frame. And the previous owner was so excited to get rid of it because it meant that, you know, she had lost weight and didn't really have a use for it. And she was thinking I'd use it as a lining for one of my bags because I do so um, zero waste bags from scraps of my leftover material. But it seemed such a waste. The fabric felt so smooth and buttery against my skin. I was like, this, this has got to be repurposed. It was a, a knit print that had pinstripes on it. And it just came out so gorgeous. You can kind of see the before and after and a kind of close, a close up of the darts on my Instagram. I posted those this morning. And I also posted a pattern review for the Simplicity 9290. It's one of the Gertie patterns that got released to Simplicity. I do love this pattern, but I take issue with it saying that it is for beginners solely because the top is such a beast and it requires so much attention to make it work right. Like it doesn't come, it doesn't start off just right. Like you have to really work with it. All right, and I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna switch over to the detail brush. I need to get a little closer than what I can get with this brush. And I'm gonna dry it off. So that way when I'm ready to use it again, it's all set for me. And while I've got the detail brush, let me clean up some lines around the ear. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and fill in the new area. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and clean this line up a little bit. Because I couldn't quite get where I wanted with my previous brush. There we go. Happy Dragon Appreciation Day, by the way. I considered doing a bonus live stream, but I decided ultimately that tonight I want to paint the inside of my craft closet since I have yet to do that amazingly and I want to put some hooks and whatnot in there and it makes sense to go ahead and have it painted before I, I uh, put any hooks in the wall so that way I don't have to paint around them later 
because I did some cleanup for my storage. And I need to clean up my space a little more and finish up that that small renovation from quote organize your home day that was on Friday. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and fill in the side bit of his hair. And I'm going to go, I know the eyebrow is also black, but because of the way the paint is directed, I'm going to avoid it for now and then come back in and fill it in. And ultimately we'll probably outline where this changes with gray, just so that it makes it easier to tell where one thing is from the other. They don't in the reference image, it's all kind of one block piece of black, but I don't care for that. So I'm gonna improve it with what I think works best, at least visually for me. There we go. And filling it in. I love acrylic painting. It is so easy to learn. It's so forgiving. If you ever mess up on anything, all you have to do is dry it and then go over it. Never, never try to fix a mistake while it's wet. You will end up caking it and smearing it and it's, it's just not a good time and it's just not necessary to stress yourself out like that. Painting should be relatively relaxing. It shouldn't feel like work. It shouldn't feel stressful. You know, there's no need for that. It's fun. And it's just about having a creative outlet and making something beautiful for either you or a friend or someone else you love. I love to give paintings as gifts. It's... A unique way to let someone know that you think that you're thinking about them it's very personal yes it's inexpensive for the most you know in comparison to some things unless you're you know having it commissioned then yeah then it can be expensive but if you're making it yourself you know beginner paint is pretty cheap canvas isn't too expensive and it's mostly about your time the time spent in making it There we go. Almost finished with the hair. And then we'll go ahead and do his eyebrows just because I've already got the black out and I don't want it to dry on my palette. It's very important to only put out on your palette what you're intending to use in that moment. You don't want to over overextend your paint because when it starts to be dried and it starts to be tacky while you're working with it, it can be not very effective. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to clean up the line under his eye here. This part of his hair. Clean that up real quick. Just because, like I said, it's already on my brush. May as well. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and put in his eyebrows. I do kind of love the way that Velen's eyebrows look. <gasps> Oopsie, I went ahead and touched my paint. Since the orange is dry, I go ahead and do this, but you see it's lifted up some of my paint. I'll have to touch up that area. I always do this, wind up getting paint on, the, on my wrist. Without failure. There's always at least some paint transfer from my wrist to my canvas, vice versa. There we go.
And feel free to add just a little bit of water to your brush when you're doing this part so that your line is very clean. You don't want to overdo it though. Just literally like a drop. Just enough to make your line smooth. There we go. And we're almost finished with one eyebrow. And we'll do more with this after we get all of our base layer in. For now, we're just putting in our detail, uh, putting in our, our color blocking. And now for the other one. And because we've got black on black here, you want to make sure that you're very intentional with your brush stroke being sideways. So it's easy to tell where this spot is versus his hair. I'm telling the story of these very bushy masculine eyebrows. And I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my brush. And I'm gonna take just the tiniest bit of like a gray even still just in the cap. Just so I know where this ended. A little bit easier. And now I'm going to start filling in the flesh. Now, I like to use burnt sienna in white for flesh. Mostly white and just add in burnt sienna as, as needed to get the color that you're looking for. You're gonna need a fair amount of this and you're gonna want a couple of different shades of, of this mixture because you'll need to be able to indicate where his jawline ends versus where his, his neck is. And we may do some, some fun with the reference and add some hair in there. Like they show, like, like every last inch of them is covered with hair. Like we're, we're going to tell the story of that a little bit, I think. Because I think that would be hilarious. All right, I'm going to mix it on my palette until I get kind of the shade I want. And we, we want this pretty light. This is not meant to be very dark. And my mixture is still just a little too dark, so I'm gonna add some more white. See if I can't get this in the in the shade I'm really wanting. All right, I think I kind of got a nice little swarfy color going on here. I'm gonna dry my brush off from where. I was mixing it and my paint got a little bit out of control. Get it dried back off again. And I'm going to do his face first. And it should be kind of kind of peachy-ish. I'm using my angle brush to kind of smooth my line. It's okay if it overlaps. If you wind up picking up black paint, rinse off your brush, dry it off and begin again. You don't want to pick up black paint and smear it all over your face. 
we're not graffitiing him, although I do think it'd be kind of funny to draw, like, a mustache on it afterwards. Maybe one day I'll do redo my paint series and have, like, ones where they've been pranked. Because I think that would be funny. Oop. There we go. Messed up my line a little bit, but that's easy to correct real fast. Okay. And following the line down. I'm going to keep my detail brush nearby just for a quick little touch-ups on his hair. I'm trying not to cover my line too much for where I've drawn where like the, his ear lines are meant to go. So I'm trying to put my paint kind of thin over that spot. So I can still have that as a reference. And I do think I'm going to switch over to not my smallest detail brush, but a detail brush just because we're getting down into like these thin areas, and I'll pick this lemon back up when I'm going to go do his neck. Right. I'm going to switch over to this. It's a number four round. This should be a little bit better for what I'm wanting to do here. There we go. And we're just continuing to fill in our space where color blocking in our, our areas. And I am going to go ahead while I've got it here and I've got a little bit of my darker one mixed. I'm going to draw in a line for his ear. Just so I don't forget that it's there. And there's another one that was sort of here that I painted over. I'm going to switch back over. And I'm intentionally not doing under the jaw yet because I want to be able to use the slightly darker color there. And I want to be able to have the value in the color. And I do have a line here that after I put in this, I want to paint back in where they're kind of telling a little bit of a story about the smirk of his mouth. So I'll put that back in real quick. Very good, very good. And we're just going to continue putting in our color. Add more paint, you know, as needed on, onto your, your palette. We're just going to be very careful. You know, that's what makes these ones so time consuming to make is because it's so much easier to draw it out first and then paint it in. It takes a long time to do this color blocking. It's part of the reason why I sell them for the price that I do is because the time to, it takes to make these is sometimes quite astronomical depending on the size. Directionality doesn't matter too, too much here. I'm just kind of going around the facial features. They'll provide their own by the natural way of 
of intentionally going around a space, they'll provide its own sort of flow and texture. There we go. And then kind of over here into this little corner. There we go. Very good. Has anyone ever opened a tube of acrylic paint and it felt like it smelled like a pool toy? Like when you inflate a pool toy? Very plasticky. I wonder why that is sometimes. Why sometimes paint smells like plastic. And here's we've got another line that we're going to try to keep the integrity of. So I'm going to go ahead and paint over it and then directly over it again. So that way the, the character of the eye is not lost. So we're telling a little bit about the story of the shape of his, his upper eye there with that. There we go. I have to wonder why Disney always makes the villain's noses so weird. Like... In painting Captain Hook's nose and jawline last week and in doing, you know, having done the ladies already and then doing this one, it's sort of like they're trying to tell the story that if you've kind of got a strange shaped face that you're a bad guy. And I don't know if I'm, I'm not, not into that as a storytelling thing, like it should be less obvious who the bad guy is. Although I do think that modern Disney movies have done a much better job of kind of eliminating that as a concept. The, the, you know, the villains are a little more I won't say that they're not as noticeable because they're, they're there, but they're more like abstract villains. I'm going to go ahead and put the line in for the nose so that way it doesn't get lost because he's got a, he's definitely got a kind of a hooked nose. Makes me wonder if he's ever played hockey because then his nose would be kind of busted up. Or boxing, that would make sense too. And we're going to go ahead and use our slightly darker color and put in that part of his eye. Again, kind of telling the shape of his eyelid. I'm going to go ahead and put his, that part of his nose in just so I can have it there and it's not lost. And I'll, you know, correct it and fill in around it when I get to that spot. I'm kind of worried about it getting lost and I, it's such a critical detail. Although it sort of makes me think of the funny noses they drew for Flynn Rider on the Wanted posters. Some of them had weird hooked noses and it kind of reminds me of this one. So I'm wondering if that was meant to be an Easter egg for Gaston. Like a funny little Easter egg poking fun at the villains. If so, that was very clever. Even if it was a happy accident. I'm gonna take a drink of my sippy sippy. Mm. Yeah. You are having a cup. 
out that you're drinking, make sure you do not confuse it with your water cup. You do not want to make that mistake. Acrylic paint is non-toxic, so it won't hurt you, but it would taste awful. Again, I'm just kind of filling it in, getting his face kind of where I want it to be. I'm going to fix that line a little bit there. Yeah, smooth it out. And just continuing to fill in our space, kind of getting the idea of what his, what his face is. I'm going to thin out my line where I went ahead and pre-drew in that. Just because it doesn't need to be quite that thick. I think this needs to be a little lighter there, so I'm going to touch for there real quick. We'll wind up probably doing another like thin layer over this to get rid of any, any brush strokes. And going back to the nose area. And that is not quite what I meant to do. It's just looking back at my reference image and I don't like that. So I'm going to paint it out and go back over that spot. It's meant to be more of a dash. There we go. That's better. And you'll realize that with painting sometimes that something isn't quite the way you thought it was and you go back and make a quick correction. And now we're going to go down and around the mouth. I'm going to go ahead and outline the area. Maybe, maybe a tiny bit dangerous given my proposition for sticking my, my wrist in my own paint, but it definitely makes it easier when you're thinking about where you have to go next. So I'm going to avoid that little spot there where I might stick my wrist down while doing under his mouth. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the line for his kind of cleft there. And just continuing to put this in. I got my Joan dress cut out yesterday. That's the the new Patreon pattern for the Charm Artist Collective for Gertie's uh, Patreon this year. I'm going to be doing it in a purple crushed velvet. It's the same dress that I painted on Wednesday night. I finally found some fabric that I liked for it, so I'm kind of excited. And I've kind of chosen a theme, you know, to work around this year. I've decided that I'm going to try and do the Patreon pattern every month. And I'm going to do it in the form of putting together a capsule wardrobe for each season. 
So I know I've got a couple of patterns I need to, to purchase to be able to make that kind of a reality. And I'm going back in real quick on some of the areas where the brush strokes are a little, a little more than I'd like and smoothing it out a little bit. Just because the paint was a little thin and it created more movement than I wanted for his face. And that's how it be sometimes. There we go. I like that. Okay, now I'm gonna go around his face with my darker shade that I created. I'm gonna do this with my detail brush, I think. I don't think I want my four round. I think I want my one round. So I'm gonna dry and rinse that off and then go back to this brush. And I'm just gonna go around where I've put in my color and anchor kind of where that part of my painting begins and ends. Because when I go to put his flesh color down on his chin, I don't want it to look like this is all still a part of some weird misshapen face. We wanna define where it ends. So we're gonna do that with this slightly darker color. This is technically a very, very easy painting to do. It is just a little time consuming to put all of the details in because you want to make sure that it's very clear what you were trying to do. And I'm going to cleft that up a little bit there. I'm going to let it come up. Tell a little story there. They didn't do that in the reference image, but I know I've seen parts of Disney films where it's kind of cleft like that. So I'm going to include it in because I think it makes them a little more of a jerk. And since we're painting this as a villain series, emphasizing jerkdom is totally permissible. And this will also help clean up any lines from where the colors met. That you may be unhappy with. Okay, I'm gonna turn my canvas so that way I don't stick my paint in it as I'm going around. Oh, well, less likely anyway. And continuing on. You know, it occurs to me this could also look a little bit like John Travolta in Greece. If you wanted to take the steps from this and tweak them for him it would 100% work and look good. And you can even use the same template. You would just adjust it a tiny bit. Mostly in the nose. But I think the hairstyle works too. Okay, so we've got that in, and I think I'm going to go ahead and outline his eye a little bit. 
with this as well. Just want to finish kind of telling the story of his skin a tiny bit. I bet he's greasy. He looks like he'd be greasy. Okay. Put him back right side up. I'm looking kind of Gastoni now. Also, it kind of reminds me of the shape in the face a little bit of uh, Brawn from Sleepy Hollow. The legend of Sleepy Hollow. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my three quarter inch, or my half inch ankle, excuse me, and I'm going to go ahead and start filling in his neck. And I'm going to use a slightly darker shade than what I had been, but not as dark as what I was doing for the detail, just because I want to be able to say that, you know, his neck is in fact below there and it's not a continuation of his face, like it's like shadow. Said he's an outdoorsman. There's a good chance that, you know, a man in this vein probably sunbathes. I definitely want to create some fan art of Gaston sunbathing. I think that would be hilarious. It should have hair coming out of everything. That would be hilarious. And you'll want to kind of, after, while it's still wet, add in a little bit of white in. Just to add some variation to the skin texture. Because nobody's skin is precisely one color. Not even with a spray tan. Because it tints what's already there. And the sun doesn't hit the same place the same way all the time. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put a little bit of white on my palette. And kind of stroke it in like that. Just to create a little bit of variation. And we may have to go back in and clean up, you know, our face line, our jaw line a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to turn my canvas upside down just because I need a little more wrist room. I do think we're going to have some fun and add some of his like chest hair in here. So I think that would be hilarious. And sort of gross, but Gaston's sort of gross, at least in my opinion. So I feel like it fits and it's appropriate. I was going to go for a run this morning to prep for the half marathon, but it was raining so hard that it created a small divot in my driveway. My driveway is pebbles. It's not paved. So whenever it rains and collects, now you kind of see here where my edges are a little darker and that's intentional. I'm going to add a little more, a little white here again into the center to kind of tell the story of the light falling there. 
and it kind of angling that way. And kind of go up here and do a little of the same, add a little bit of the skin tone with white in a couple of places. Just kind of shaping the story of his face a little bit, smoothing it out. Because he totally airbrushes his photos. He has to be that vain. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. The skin is always kind of my, it's always kind of the hardest part in one of these kinds of paintings, only because it's one of the few areas when I'm done where I'm not gonna add a lot of excess work to it. So it's all up to this first layer, kind of telling the story that I needed to tell. Okay, and we are almost done kind of, and I'm, and I'm just adding a little bit of water to my brush with just a little bit of the paint to just kind of smooth out things a little bit. We're giving them a little bit of an airbrush job. Not much, just a little. I'm gonna go back in and touch up, touch up his nose. My line got a little bit lost there. Just making some small adjustments. And I'm gonna go back over here and touch up this spot a little bit along the jawline. I'm pretty happy with that. Ooh. So directly down in my paint. Okay, so we've kind of got our most of our face in. We're gonna go ahead and move on. Let's go ahead and put in this sort of yellow ochre over here. Because it's sort of like a mustardy color, like a French mustard color. So yellow ochre is perfect for this. And I'm going to use my three quarter angle brush. Oh, actually, I need to finish the skin on the underside. Oh, I'm going to do that real fast. There we go. Okay. So now for the yellow ochre, and that's gonna be just for like right here and here. Here is this sort of, you know, uh, we'll go with it, what looks like a sun-dried red. Like a red that's not been washed right, and has been laundered and dried too many times. A washed out red. And while I've got this upside down, I'm gonna actually start up here with the top with my yellow. 
and do the sides so I don't forget. And because yellow is kind of opaque, you want to make sure that your brush strokes make sense for the way the fabric would fall. Okay, and I'm not confident in getting in that corner with this brush, so I'm not going to try. I'll go back with my detail brush for that. But for now, I'm just sliding my paint into the right places. Trying to make sure it stays in that sort of round delivery. I'm actually trying to eliminate as many brush strokes as I can here. So I'm going to rinse and dry my brush real quick. I still have this one weird line there that I don't like. That I want to get rid of. There we go. And now I'm going to go and do the other side. And it's the same kind of thing. We are going to want it, all the brush strokes to be going in the same direction, going down off the canvas. But for the moment, I'm just going to get my line in. And then I'll fix the brush strokes while the paint is wet. And I'm going to do the underside here of my canvas really fast. Okay, and now for up here in this corner. And now I'm going to use the flat side of the brush to stroke out the extra paint and kind of get it tell the flow line that I want for my for this fabric of the shirt. Now I'm going to take my tiny detail brush and get up here in this corner that I couldn't do earlier. And a little along the skin here. Okay. Dry off and rinse both my brushes or rinse and then dry off. That would make more sense. Okay. And now we've got this bit of this red. Although I am going to, while this part is now dry, correct that little weird bit of orange that got messed up earlier. It was just a good opportunity to fix it. Okay, and I think we will go with this cadmium red hue. It kind of looks a little like rust in a way, which is what we're looking for. You won't need a whole lot of this. And maybe I'll throw in some quinacridone scarlet because it's not quite the dark shade I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a little darker. You see the difference? This 
also probably make a nice shade of lipstick, if I'm totally honest. And we're going to go ahead and do the sides and the bottom real quick. And again, because this is fabric, we want all the paint to be going in one direction. And we definitely want a very clean line going between the red and the yellow. And we're almost finished with the color blocking for our main colors here. We've just got the eyes and the mouth to go. There. I'm going to rinse and dry my brush. And I'm going to use the same shade of red using my detail brush to fill in this corner piece of his mouth and his hair tie. That's the bit of the, the shadow in his mouth. And then the hair tie. Because he's a matchy matchy boy, his hair tie matches his coat because of course it does. And I think I'm going to go around his mouth with his with the dark flush color real quick. It's just because I realized I had skipped it and it's kind of bugging me. It's kind of hard to work on the rest of his face when it looks like his teeth are just hanging out there. So let's just fix that real quick. And I'm also going to go around that bit of where I just painted in his mouth red. And to keep my wrist from getting in my paint, I'm going to turn it sideways for a minute. And I'm going to take a little bit of gray and draw in a partial line for his teeth because it's not drawn in aggressively. 
I'm just going to literally use the tiny bit inside the cap. I don't even need to take any out because I just need a small little line. And not even all the way across. It's just sort of here. Think about those like cartoon smiles where they have like the dazzling smile. That's kind of what we're going for here. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and put in his eyes. It is finally time. His eyes are sort of a light blue. And we're gonna use so little of this that I'm actually just gonna use the inside of my cap. And making sure we cover where we drew on our line for his, for his eye. So you don't want that showing. And then the other one. All right, and now we're going to put in his pupil. And they kind of show it in the reference image, like it's sort of towards the bottom, like this. So we'll do it that way and see how we think about it. If we don't like it, we'll paint over it. And in this one, it's just this tiniest little bit over here in the corner. See, I don't like it. It looks weird, so I'm going to take it out. At least that eye looks weird. I'm going to center it instead. Okay, rinse the brush, and I'm going to dry this real fast so that we can go over it. Okay. Now let's try that again. I'll stick it in the center this time. And to make it easier for myself, I'm going to flip it back right side up. I don't like that one now, so hold on. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna get his eyes right. Just because he's a demon doesn't mean he shouldn't have, you know, correct eyes. There we go. And instead, we'll kind of center it over here. There. And we'll make this one a little bigger on this side. Okay. 
much better. And I'm going to use my little brush and I'm going to add a couple of, just a couple of like dots of white. Just because his eyes would not be like straight black like that. And I don't like it like that. Okay, so you could stop now if you really wanted and you would just have a good Gaston painting. Like this is your base. You should be pretty happy with it as it is right now. Now, we're going to go ahead and add in all of the extra detail. Okay, we'll get a good straight on shot of this. Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and add in all of the extra detail that makes it fun and in any of all crafts villain collection piece. So we're pretty much done with our brushes for the most part. We're gonna, we'll use a little bit for texture, but not for a whole lot. We're going to use our angle brush real quick and we're gonna put some extra texture in his hair. You just kind of kind of do a couple of lazy straight strokes. Because this is the second layer where these strokes are will appear slightly darker than the ones below it. Which is sort of the story that we're trying to tell with his hair that there's that there's something going on there. And it should follow the line, like this part should be kind of rounded off. You want to be careful that you don't obstruct your eyebrow when you're doing this. So we've done that. And I think we're done with the angle brush. And we're going to switch over to using just our smallest detail brush now. We're going to mix just the barest like gray into our black or just use a smidge of white because we're going to add some some texture in. And we're just trying to add like some some a little more flow to his hair. We're not trying to say he's gray, but we are trying to say that the light is hitting it. You definitely want to be careful about where you're setting your wrist. You don't want to, to mess up all of your hard work. We're just doing little quick dashes. We're not thinking too hard about it. There we go. And we may go back in and add a little bit of of brown work into this too, just so we don't accidentally tell the story that Gaston is a middle-aged man. He might be. I don't, I don't, you know, don't quote me on that. I don't think he's marketed as that old. He's meant to be like virile. So I can't imagine that he's designed to be too very old, but you never know. If you do know his age, drop it in chat. And for this, you want to make sure you tell that that same story kind of in his eyebrows. And you want to make sure that the direction makes sense. There. 
So we've got kind of our, our gray in. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber. I hadn't originally intended to use that, but I think that will work really well here because it's got kind of more of a smoky wood look to it. So let me grab that. We don't need a whole lot of this. We just need a little. And again, we're just trying to tell the story of his hair. It's, it's very shiny. It's very sleek. It's very full of product. This is definitely a, a dude that cares about his appearance. This is pomaded and gelled. And I'm sure if hairspray existed, if you have used some. So we're just, we're, we're telling the story of his vanity. It's very, you know, very, he's very into himself. How he appears, how he appears to others. These are things that matter to him for whatever reason. They shouldn't, but that's why he's the Disney villain. He's very consumed by what his village thinks. That's why he's got to quote, have the best. And because, you know, Belle is the best, that's why he thinks they should be together. And that's kind of silly in my line of thinking, but in the mind of someone like this, that probably makes sense. And we're going to tell the story in his eyebrows, too. And again, the directionality matters here because we don't want the eyebrows to get kind of lost in the hair. All right, so we've got his hair done. His hair is finished. We are now going to tell think the story of his shirts. So we did the yellow and the yellow ochre and then we could go over it with another layer because of its translucency adding another layer makes it appear darker. So we're going to add a few little lines all going in the same direction following this collar. We'll go back and add dots and whatnot after the fact, but we're putting in our lines for now. Because we're just kind of filling it in, getting it started on, on the story that we're trying to tell. And make sure you continue on the side and on the bottom. And I'll do the bottom when I do this bottom. I'll do both of those at the same time. I wish I could play music without it being copyright striked, but it is what it is. So you get to hear my unfortunate voice, you poor unfortunate souls. And I'm going to turn it over and do the underside. Okay. I'm 
Mm. Sorry about that. Knocked my camera while I was trying to get my sippy sippy. So next, I am going to go ahead and do the red. And I think for the red, I'm going to use scarlet because it's a little bit darker than what I've got up there. And again, we won't need very much for what we're doing. So don't put a whole lot out. We're just kind of adding a little bit of movement and texture. And again, this is the scarlet and the red I used underneath was the conacridone scarlet. So this is sort of like a deeper shade of the same. And that's why this kind of works really well for this, for creating a little bit of extra texture. And don't forget your sides and your bottom. Be very careful not to stick your wrist down in, in your painting. There we go. When I finish up here, I'm so excited. I'm going to finish and post my Joan Wiggle dress. It's going to be really exciting. I'm actually also going to go ahead and use this red kind of where I had used the other red. Just to add a little bit more like dimension and texture there. And it came with the hair tie. And we'll flip them right side up. And we, I need to decide how I'm going to tell the story of this background. A lot of the times I usually use something that's sort of in the same theme with the rest of, with like that particular villain. For this, I might use arrows since he's a huntsman. Uh, but I'm trying to decide if I want to go ahead and put dots on his face or not. I did for Captain Hook last time and I really liked it, but it's not for every single painting. It just doesn't always work out in your favor. And I'm really sort of liking the swarthiness that I managed to get there. So I'm not really sure I'm willing to risk biffing it all up, but might be worth it. Might be worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this so that way I can kind of work on the background here without fear of getting black and smearing it all over his face. As funny as he would be with a mustache. We're not doing that intentionally this time, at least. Normally I wouldn't get too technical about my background, but because I'm thinking I'm going to do arrows, I'm going to grab a piece of chalk and draw some kind of guidelines so that way they're all in the same kind of margin. And I'm going to use... I'm not going to use my regular ruler. I'm going to use my sewing ruler. I like this because it is, well, it's move backwards, but it, it's three inches wide. So it makes it a little bit easier to gauge kind of where like the two inch mark is. Cause I don't really want it so busy. I think I want one every two inches and that's it. 
So I'm going to line up that with that. Being careful not to, I mean, chalk will wipe off, but I don't really want to touch everywhere. I don't want to line. This is nice because it, it's clear and I can have it line up on top of my existing lines to get that continuous shape. And that's it. So we're going to have those as our as our arrow lines. And I think we're going to do it in I think we're going to do it in red. I think that I think that'll work nicely. So I'm going to grab out my red and cover where I've got my chalk. Now, except for I'm not going to go all the way down because I want to leave points for where the arrow is. And make sure you extend the directionality of your arrow up on the top of your canvas. And at the bottom, I'm going to do this. Actually, I kind of messed that up a tiny bit. Hold on. There we go. Because of the, that of the way I'm doing this, that should actually be straight for it to be a right angle. That's what makes the most sense there. It's definitely something to be thinking about, you know, when you're putting something like that in your background. And do the next one. And because it kind of goes behind, There we go. And up and over the top. And you got to decide, I don't want them to all stop at the same point. So I'm thinking I might have this one come a little further to the edge. And take straight and straight. And for this one, because, you know, clearly it's way up there, I'm going to stop, obviously, much sooner. And I think I'm going to stop it here. I'm sure you're wondering, what am I going to do with the chalk? Well, when it's dry, I can just wipe that off real fast. Chalk clears up off your acrylic really nicely, which is why it's great for when you're sketching something out when you've already got paint down. And for this one, I think I'm going to stop it here. And remembering to kind of extend it off the side. And you know, this doesn't mean our background is done. We're going to put in dashed lines here too. It'll be extended, but we're just putting in sort of the guideline for what we're going to do in our background. And for here, I think I'm going to have it stop way down here. And don't forget to extend from the back. And for the right angle, straight up and straight out. All right, so we've got our, we've got the, the feel for what we were wanting to do with our background. You may choose something different. 
you know, you can, if you feel more confident about putting in antlers or something else, you know, go for it. This is just sort of what's in the background. Now, I, now I've got to decide what I'm doing about, got to decide what I want to do about his face. It does take up a lot of space on here, so I do feel like I need to do something. So what I'm going to do is add a little white to the leftover of my flesh tones, and I'm going to go ahead and put a base layer in. And I'm going to use my angle brush to mix my paint on my palette. So I don't want this to be as dark as the color I've already used. I want this to be lighter than what I've been using. So that way it kind of shows up really well. And before I mess myself up. I'm going to go ahead and dry my arrows. And because my arrows are dry now, I can take a little bit of water and remove the chalk so it doesn't distract me. And we're going to play with his face a little bit. It's just a little bit lighter than what I was using. It might even be kind of hard to see on camera. But these little details are going to make a difference. And when you do the do dots for his nose, you're going to want to follow like the shape of where, you know, how a nose would go. And the same for kind of going around the eye. You want to follow the lines around the eye. You want to follow the lines you've already got there. So that way when you add the dots, they make sense. I'm just going to finish filling them in. And continuing to add our little bit of dots. Just creating a little bit of texture. You know, I expect him to be pretty hairy. So he's definitely got pores. Make good use of them. I often kind of wonder why he didn't have a beard. I mean, if he's so hairy. So we kind of got a little bit of a, a layer there. And I think I'm going to go back in with just a little bit of white in a couple of places and add a couple and add a couple just with pure white.
or almost pure white. We're just kind of telling the story of the highlights in his face. I wonder if this was always the way they imagined he was going to look when they were, you know, doing the concept drawing for Beauty and the Beast. Or if they base this guy, base this character on a real person. Well, I know a lot of the times they like to match him up with the voice actors, but I have no idea who the voice actor is for Gaston. They did a good job with the live action one. He absolutely looked exactly how I expected him to look. Continuing to add texture. I'm going to add a little more straight white in a couple of places. Kind of makes it easier for, for me to swallow. Like the idea of having this guy on my wall. It's so creepy but I have an intense fascination for villains. I absolutely love them. The guy villains are a little harder just because there are so many like truly villainous men in the world. Not that there's not truly villainous women, but I don't know, I guess as a woman, it's easier for me to, to villainize a man. And that's a statement on society and that's kind of sad. So I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. Instead, I'm going to say how much I really wish that my smile was as nice as his, or at least as white as his. Like, I imagine, like, if you've ever watched um, The Fairly Odd Parents and the friend that has the, the super shiny, glittery smile. Like, so jealous. My smile will never be that nice because I drank soda for too many years and take horrible care of my teeth. Absolutely horrific care. That almost no amount of fixing it as an adult will ever make up for how much I did not do what I should have done when I was younger. And I think we're almost done with this. And then we'll move on to his chest. Okay, we're gonna use some of the color that we've already made, but remember that this was a little bit different in shade because we made this a little bit darker and then added white in some areas. So you may need to do a little more work for it to show. Okay. There we go. I posted my review for the Simplicity 9290 this morning. I absolutely love that pattern. Like as far as like being a confident seamstress, I absolutely love it. But I definitely would not say the entire all the pieces are designed with beginners in mind. You know, it says that it's you know easy to sew, but I would not expect you know, someone who's new at sewing to be able to figure out how to do boning 
without breaking their machine. I think I might go back and add a couple of like dark ones around parts of the face that I've accented. I think that might tell a little bit more of a story. I think I'm going to do that real quick. Not a whole lot. And not very thick or heavy, just, just a little something. It occurs to me this kind of also makes me think of like the rock as far as like facial shape. Because he's kind of got that, I won't say strange nose, but we'll say unique nose. I think it would work out well there. And a little around here. And the ear. Part of the tail had gotten lost there, so we'll add it back. I'll do a couple of these darker, darker lines where the shadow of his neck would be. Not everywhere, just sort of kind of in some areas kind of loses its value and meaning if you use it over everywhere. Now I'm going to do a little bit of white and then I'm going to say that his skin is done. And I'm going to stick the white mostly to the sides where I put most of the darker color. And just a little in the center. Alright, so I think we're done with the skin. I think we're done telling the story of a skin. I am going to put a little bit of white, I think, into, into the yellow here. And I think I want to mix in a little bit of more like a canary yellow. just for some more texture. And again, because yellow is kind of translucent, anywhere you stick it will look a little bit darker, even though this is a different shade of yellow. All right, and I'm gonna turn it upside down because I just realized I did not do the dots on his chest and I need to do the dots for the yellow. So I'm gonna do that all at the same time. There we go. I'm going to add in the yellow on this side now. 
And because I've put paint on the bottom, I'm going to wait to turn it upside down for a little bit. And we're just kind of adding a little more yellow into the mix, a little more variety in the in the color palette here. Because we're really wanting this to, to pop. And don't forget the sides. Okay. Now I think I want to use a little bit of the orange in the, in my red, just because I think that might create like a fun like it it will it will just kind of tie in the color scheming together. And it won't be because orange is very opaque as well. It won't be very overpowering. And it might dull down like the over shininess of this red. It's a little more, more vibrant than I really wanted. I wanted something a little more worn down. So this will kind of help do that. And don't forget to do the underside and the sides. Maintain discipline. And I think I'm going to actually go ahead and use some of the skin tone color, like the darker skin tone color in his hair. There we go. not doing a, a whole crazy lot we're just adding a little more so that again it doesn't get confused for gray you definitely want you know don't want to make him feel like an old man but telling the story about the shininess of his brown hair not him going salt and pepper and again you don't want to mess up the eyebrow and you should put a little bit of the brown in there though but make sure you have good directionality on your brush And I think now that we've got that in there, we should probably go ahead and start putting in all the fun details for our background. And because orange is so incredibly opaque, I do think that by putting in extra lines there, we'll tell a really good story. And then I think we'll use some of the yellow ochre that we originally started with in the design. These you don't have to be as specific. You just want to make sure that they're all in the same direction, approximately. We're just creating a little bit of fun texture for our background. You don't need to like overthink this part. This is just your background.
We're just, you know, telling a little bit of story about the arrows. And make sure you continue that, you know. On the sides. There we go. And it's okay if you kind of gob your paint for this. It'll just add that much more texture, which is not a bad thing, especially if you put too much orange on your palette at the beginning, like I did. You have to find a way to use it because I don't believe in washing paint down. So I'm gonna find a way to use it. I'm I'm incredibly motivated to do that. So it might mean that I wind up sticking some extra orange in other places just to make sure I use it all. Or wind up doing several layers of these dashes. And don't forget again to continue this on the sides and you want to make sure that it's going in the same direction. Yeah. There we go. And continuing our lines. Again, this is a, a very simple painting, just very time consuming to do the technique. If you liked it without all the embellishments, you know, you could have could have stopped or paused me and decided to wait and see how it came out. See if it's your cup of tea before continuing on. I'm not offended. The style is not for everyone. Not everyone has the patience for it. That's why I offer it as to sell them. It does take a lot of patience. Little bit. I need to angle this a little bit so that way I can see and access a little better. And don't forget your sides. And we're almost done with putting this first layer of this, you know, first layer of detail anyway, into our background. We'll have, we'll do, we'll, we'll wind up definitely putting in more. Yeah, this is just step one for a very involved background. And maintain different, uh, you know, discipline in doing the sides. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dry, rinse and dry my brush and turn my canvas over. Actually, I'm going to dry it first, at least the bottom.
do be very careful if you globbed it on like I did because I've definitely got dots and lines that are very thick and very, very wet still. But I am going to go ahead and do my, my lines on the top of my canvas. And then I'll have almost used up all of the orange paint that was on my palette. And then I've got to find a way to use up some of this extra red I put on. And I will probably use that in my background. And I may put some extra uh, lines and texture down in the actual painting on his coat. Or I might do a fun surprise and include some of it in his hair. I was noticing that his eyes are the only cool color in here. It kind of makes them menacing in a way. I can, pro I can I guess that's probably why they did it that way. Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and do more of my red now. And I think I want to tell a little bit of this, the story of this like scarlet in his hair a little bit. I think that could work out nicely. I know he's not a redhead, but that doesn't mean that it can't work. It all is complimentary. And then when we're got all of our kind of lines in, we'll go ahead and we'll add dots. Yes, I know. It's a lot of layers, but it makes a lot of difference. All right, and I'm gonna go back in and add some more of this in his actual coat but I'm going to do it in very small lines because I've already used this and I don't want to get it too dark. That's not our goal here. Our goal is just to break up any uniformity in the color. We don't want any uniformity in the color. And we definitely have created a lot of movement here. And I think we're gonna go ahead and add, tell, the, tell a little bit more of the story of these arrows. But I think I gotta wait and come back to that though, just because I, I've got a little too much going on, too much wet paint. So I'm gonna go in and use the, more of the yellow ochre and do just a little more going on in here. Again, it'll darken it, so I wanna kind of touch any places that I haven't already touched or kind of bridge the gap of where layers have touched. There. 
And I think that's all we really need on that side. And there's a little more blank space on this side. So we're going to go ahead and fix that a little bit. Again, these are just tiny little strokes in areas where there hasn't seemed to been another another little layer. We're just developing texture. So that definitely has a little more going on there now. And I think I'm going to use some of the yellow oak over here in the red too. And it doesn't matter if it's covering anything. We're just going to do a loose layer of lines over the whole thing. We're telling the story of it being complementary. It may be red, but he's wearing it with yellow, so it has to match and go in. And don't forget the sides. Okay. And I think we have to, well, no, we'll just turn it upside down. I was going to say, we I think we may have to dry it, but I think we can make do with it upside down. And we're going to add some more going on with these red lines. So I have a, a, a fair bit of red paint left. Oh, actually, I have to. His hair is in the way for the upper part. I mean, some parts of it are still a little wet, but that's enough to work with. And I'm going to use up the rest of this yellow ochre that I've got. And just kind of texture it in a little bit here and there. Not really caring about how it goes on or how thick. I'm just making sure it all follows the same directionality. And make sure you do the sides. Anything you do on the front, you want to do on the sides. A lot of the times I like to use the background as a way of you using up like the excess paint on the palette because anything that you used in your painting will naturally look good in your background because you've already used it somewhere. So no matter what, it's going to match and look like it belongs. And I'm almost out of the yellow ochre, so I'm going to use it a little more sparingly until I get at least 
a little bit everywhere. So that way I don't have to put more out just to balance it. And a little on the side. There. So I've used up all the remaining yellow over. And now I'm going to use up this last bit of this yellow. And there wasn't a whole lot of it, so I'm going to use it kind of sparingly. Just in a couple of key places. is not got to be everywhere to be effective. Okay. All right, so that's the last of my yellow. And I still have a fair amount of red, so I'm going to fix this by including it on my arrow. Now I can go ahead and, and make my arrow a little a little darker, a little thicker. And this one as well. And then up here on this one as well. All right, so I'm going to put in a few of my red dashes now, and I'm going to try and keep them kind of close to where these are. I don't want it to stray too far from where I've already put in arrows. Because I kind of want it to make a bit of a striped effect. It kind of feels like a bit of a fall vibe that I hadn't really intended, but I like it. Like leaves and fall. Maybe something to think about when I go to paint for fall as a background idea. Got a line that got a little away from me, so I'm going to fix that real quick. There. Just had to rub it off. And over on this side. Okay, and then on this side. And again on this one. And on the 
this upper one, well, technically, I guess this lower one as well. Okay, now I'm going to flip it and do the top. Okay, so I still have a fair amount of red left, so I'm going to use it up in dots. So I'm going to go ahead and add my dots down on top of this red section. We are getting close to finished. We are definitely almost there. I'm just going to go in and add some nice heavy globs of dots to use this up. You could, I guess, in theory, count your painting finished, but I like adding a lot of extra detail. And I definitely want to use up everything that's on my palette. sort of like eating at the 1950s diner at Hollywood Studios. You're not allowed to leave the table until your plate is clean. Well, the concept works for paint too. And yes, it's kind of going over where I've already done all of that excessive lining but it really does make a difference in adding a ton of texture. And then don't forget your side. So I'm gonna turn, the, turn my canvas so that I can get my side a little easier. I have a little bit of this darker red still too, so I'm going to put that on there. If you're wondering why did I go through all of the work of the line work if I'm just going to cover it with dots, it's because you can still see all of the line work under there. And it kind of makes it easier to do the dot work if all of the the base is in there nicely, so you don't have to do as much. Part of the work has been done for you. That makes it look textured and alive. All right, I still have a little bit left. So I'm going to do really heavy dots here in the little in the hair bow tie and on the arrow itself. Okay, 
if you're wondering why I have so much red on my palette, it's because if you remember, I was originally laid out to do a different color there, and then it wasn't quite dark enough. So I wound up with extra red on my palette that I wouldn't normally have. And we almost killed most of the red. Which is good. Because then I'll dry the bottom and then get the top layer of these arrows. And I think I will have used up all of the red I have. Almost done, and then we'll be able to sign it. I think I might do a few black dots in the hair, though. Just because I still have a little black on my palette, and I can make use of it in that way. I'm going to dry the bottom of my canvas and then I'll dot the top of my arrows. All right, mine are still really wet because my dots are really, really thick. You can kind of see that there. So I'm being very careful not to touch the front of my canvas. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put in, use up my black in his hair. Create some intense texture there. And because I used the black at the very beginning, it's grown a little bit tacky, which in this case, I guess, kind of helps us because it means I'm able to kind of scoop it onto my dotting tool and it be kind of on the heavy side.
almost kind of done putting in the black. I'm just making good use of the paint that's on my palette. That's part of the reason why I add, I try to add just about what I think I'm gonna use, and then I find ways to use what was extra, especially if like it's a case where, like in this particular case where I had extra because the tube wanted to dispense a little too quickly. So I wound up with way more than I needed. And I'm actually going to avoid putting the dots of the black anyway on the eyebrow. I'm going to do um, the burnt umber there instead as a focus. Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off my, my dotting tool. And I still have the tiniest bit of burnt umber left. So I'm gonna put that on his eyebrows. I still have the tiniest bit of like skin color. So maybe I'll, I'll tell a little bit of a story with that. Actually, I'm not sure I like that. I'm gonna skip it. I'm just gonna smooth it out. I didn't like it. It didn't work for me. I didn't like it there. Sometimes it just happens that way. So I'm gonna take my little tiny brush and put a little bit of that, of my little line work back in. All right, so this time I'm gonna wind up with extra skin dot, put a little bit of extra skin color on my palette just because I can't find a way to use it. But I think I'm mostly done. I've got a little bit of gray. I think I'm gonna throw that into the background in the form of dots. Kind of again telling this directional story. The gray is left over from adding a little bit into his hair. Again, it's got to continue kind of along the edge. And because there's only a little bit left, I'm going to highlight it only where I've got my red arrows and not everywhere. And then this one. All right, and now for the next arrow. And because this one's a little bit longer, I have to make sure you follow all the way down. As for the reasoning, I think I just kind of like the striping effect that the arrows have sort of created. 
So I'm just kind of exaggerating that a little bit because I like the style. Sometimes if there is no other reason just for, then you'll like it. And that's okay. Valid life choices. Continue on the side. And I'm scraping up this last bit of gray so I can finish this area with the same kind of style. Perfect amount, actually. I'm almost out. And I think we are ready to sign. I just want to finish up the top here. There. What do you think? Do I look super villainous? Does he look super slimy? That's the finished piece. And I think I'm gonna sign in black. That's the only thing I really got any kind of amount left of. Cause I don't really want to sign with the skin tone. I don't really think that'll show up against the red. So I'm gonna be very careful about where I touch. And I'm going to initial it. And that's villain two in the books. Thank you for joining me. I hope to meet you at the easel again on Wednesday. I don't know what I'm painting yet, but I'll let you know on Tuesday when I release the, the traceable on Patreon. Again, you can join Patreon for $2 a month and you'll get all the traceables for all of my live streams. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. I hope you enjoy your long weekend if you are lucky enough to have that. Bye.